Space Coconut. Hooray, it's Pyramid Head. Okay, so let's talk about the actual mechanics because the design of the map and the killer and the power, I suppose, are pretty good, like design-wise, like visually. They're visually appearing, appealing. The map, you know, as usual, the design team did amazing, but let's take a look at this power. I, I, I played a few matches with him, like three matches, and I actually like him. What's what's funny, a lot of people are on the fence. Um, I haven't paid attention to what um, many other people or streamers or content creators are saying about Pyramid Head. So I'm just going to talk from my perspective and the way I'm looking at this killer. His power feels a lot like Freddy's. You want the survivors to step into, what is that even called, the judgment thing? You want them to step into judgment and get tormented. Um, ideally, you want to place those little um, trails of torment, trails of judgment, I guess. I'm going to get confused. The little trails, you're going to want to leave those where survivors are going to go. They can um, crouch, walk through them like a hag's trap and not be affected by it. So wherever you put it, you're going to be putting it where survivors are going to be running. Um, very similar to how I use hag traps or how you would use Freddy's traps or snares. So by doing that, you're kind of, you're not limited um to doing that but if you want to get the most out of this power you want them to do that some survivors have already picked up on the idea that that it's better to not try and loop him but instead start holding w kind of like nurse but thankfully he's 115 percent killer so no matter what if they want to get away they're going to have to um loop him at some point or at least try uh, his power doesn't slow him down. The only time it slows him down, and it you know slows him down a lot, is when you actually try to blast them with a little beam. And a lot of people are saying that, well, a few people that I've noticed, because I watched it, I was at work, I couldn't watch the stream, I was very sad. Um, they say that it's hard to hit survivors directly with the beam, that it's very easy to dodge. So it's much like the doctor's um, shock therapy in that you have to anticipate where a survivor is going to be, not where they're at uh, at the present time. So it's going to help a lot if you can lose line of sight and just kind of predict where the survivor is going to go and then nail them with the beam. Unfortunately, the beam isn't quite long enough to pull off some nice tricks. So you're going to be stuck using the add-ons um, to, you know, get somebody in the shack as an example but depending on the angle that they're taking you can probably hit them with it, uh, it, it you just got to find the right angle and the right time and the place to hit them with it but um, using that beam you're gonna want to anticipate where they're at the uh, cages that you put survivors in it's just a time saver if you want to um, you know down a survivor and just instantly get there without get them basically on a hook without having to worry about decisive or flashlight it's gonna be good um but you do have a few hoops to jump through that might just cost you the same amount of time if a survivor isn't tormented when you catch them it, it kind of depends on how you go about using um pyramid head it's gonna get take some getting used to i feel like he's similar to demogorgon uh, in using his shred if you want to use the beam. The interesting thing about this mechanic that they've introduced where you get this mini Mori if the survivor is on their last hook and they're tormented, they wanted to do something special with this character, right? Now we have a precedent for a killer having two Moris. One that they would, you know, need to use an offering or rancor for or devour hope. And then the other that's built into the character, it's not flashy, it's not spectacular, it's not bloody or gory or, you know, very interesting, but it's a Mori designed to get a survivor out of the game quickly. If we 
see this as a precedent, it's possible that this mechanic could be um, the springboard for a change to Mori's in the future, in that when a survivor is on their death hook, the killers are going to be able to Mori them. Maybe with a quick Mori, maybe with the epic one, if we can call it that, the, the Ebony. But I think similar to the... Um, there was a perk that Steve got where you heal over time. And I made a video talking about how they could use that mechanic to fix the syringes. Lo and behold, that's what they ended up doing. You get healed over time, which... And now I'm kind of seeing... Well, I would like to see that this mechanic that they have for uh, Pyramid Head be applied to other uh, killers in the future in that when a survivor is on their death hook and they're going to die anyway, that we can just do either a quick Mori or the killer's regular Mori and get them out of the game without having to use an offering at all. And then the, uh, and then the devs could actually take out the Mori offerings altogether. I mean, because when, when you see a killer use a secret offering, you know what it is. No, no, no killer in their right mind is going to use the Shroud of Separation because in that instance, you're getting four gens done in 80 seconds, like on purpose. Why would you do that to yourself? So I wonder if this is something that they've implemented and that they can use the coding for to change Mori's in the future. We don't have anything um, set up to change keys, which, you know, would be on par for them to nerf something that the killers have and then not touch the survivors but who knows they might not even touch uh Maury's this way but with this precedent we can maybe see it that way uh as for pyramid him head himself i actually like him his perks do not surprise me whatsoever they're basically niche situation garbage but i mean the devs can't come up with perks that are as good as perks that we have already because then they can be combined with the, cur the perks that we have already and killers, not just any individual one, killers in general will become too powerful and they we can't have that, can we? So um, later on, um, I won't, okay. So in regards to his perks, his perks basically suck. Um, they're very niche. Some, um, the one, what is it called? Okay, forced penance. It says those who stand in the way of the, uh, those who stand in the way of duty will suffer harsh judgment. Survivors who take protection hits are inflicted with the broken status effect for 30 seconds at the max. Uh, 20, 25, 30. So niche, if you run into survivors who are deliberately trying to, you know, take hits and they want to get their Medal of Man going, that's fine. But I mean, broken for 30 seconds, you're chasing an injured survivor and they take a protection hit or you're carrying a survivor and they take a protection hit. 30 seconds isn't a lot of time to capitalize on that. But I suppose the idea is that they can't even heal themselves for 30 seconds. And then after that period of time, they can heal, but you should be able to be mobile and catching them. So this is actually, let's go back. This is a perk that's activated by survivors. A survivor has to willingly get in front of you and get hit in order for this perk to activate. So, according to my rules, and you know my rules by now, a perk that's dictated by survivors is bad. You might get those few survivors who want to be altruistic and try and block and all of those things, but the reward for this is punishing the survivor. It doesn't directly buff the killer, which is something that would be better, in my opinion, for perks for killers. Mm. Yeah, this perk is triggered by survivors and it debuffs survivors. So combined, it's bad. Trail of Torment. You guide your victims along a, pain, a path of pain and punishment. Ugh. After kicking a generator, you become undetectable for 15 seconds. During this time, the generator's aura is revealed in yellow to all survivors. Trail of Torment can only be triggered once every 120, 180 seconds. So the problem I have with this perk is, yes, the killer has agency over when he can activate this perk, right? The problem is, is that you're undetectable for 15 seconds, which means a survivor can't uh, hear your terror radius or see your red stain, if I'm right, for 15 seconds, which means you can travel 
for 15 seconds away from the generator. But survivors know your center point. Once that gen goes yellow, they know that that's where you were standing at that point in time. And then they can determine which way you're going to go for 15 seconds. They know if you go to them, they know which direction you're going to be coming from. So unless you spend the majority of that time circling around the survivors as if you knew where they were, right? They're going to see you coming. They're going to be aware that you're coming, even if you're undetectable. They're going to see you coming. They're going to be able to pay attention. And on many maps, it's not going to do you any good. Uh, Auto Haven Wreckers, uh, Rotten Fields, any of those places, they can see you coming. If they look at the direction uh, using the gen as a center point, maybe you're coming towards them, maybe you're not, but they can look in that direction and know where you're coming from. By giving the survivors another warning that the killer is undetectable, they take away something from this perk. So, I mean, I'd like to see, you know, the survivors not be able to see the aura because other after that, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I don't like the time limit on activating it, but I mean, it, giving every killer um, that much undetectable could be pretty, pretty broken depending on how you use it. But being able to choose when you use it also, that's a pretty interesting idea. But yeah, I'd like to take the warning away from survivors because what's the point of warning them that the killer is undetectable? What, what's the point of that? Deathbound. Those, who, those whose lives are intertwined in darkness and are destined to suffer together. When a survivor heals another survivor for one health state, at least 32 meters away from the killer, the survivor performing the healing action will scream, revealing their location and activating Deathbound for the next 45 seconds. During that time, the survivor will suffer from the oblivious status effect when farther uh, than 16, 12, and 8 meters away from the healed survivor. So if they split up, um, that person gets oblivious. So it's not... Oblivious isn't that huge of a deal. You can still see the red stain if you can keep track of where the killer is. But if you lose track of the killer, it's pretty good. I, this is probably his best perk. And that's not saying a whole lot. Uh, it's basically a reverse nurse's calling. It's going to give you a direction if a survive, if you lost survivors, it's going to tell you, give you a general direction as to where to go to find these survivors. Now, you don't, you don't have any way of tracking the oblivious survivor that would actually, it would be cool, but it would be broken. But I don't know. It, 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 the oblivious status effect, I'm not a huge fan of in general. I think it's a weak effect that, you know, doesn't help much. Uh, it doesn't help, especially because of the limited amount of time that they put on these types of perks and that there's no tracking type to it. But that's, that's a different topic. The fact that they give away their position is probably the best part of this perk because there's no guarantee you're going to find the survivor that um, is oblivious in the first place. You might stumble on them if they, you know, make a noise or whatever. Still, I mean, they're pretty far away at 32 meters and generally they're going to be much further away than that. And so Deathbound is his best perk, but it's seriously all of them. They're not very good, but we should have expected that. So moving on from the perks, um, if anything, they're I want to give the devs the benefit of the doubt and say that they'll make these perks a little bit better. They seem on par for the perks that they've created so far, so I don't see them changing much. But they did nerf uh, one of the Deathslinger's perks. I forget which one. Was it Gearhead? They nerfed Gearhead for some reason, you know, that nobody really understood. So I can see nerfs happening to these perks in one form or another, but probably duration time thingies. That's going to be dumb. But we'll see. As for Pyramid Head himself, the ability to fake um, using the beam might be something that they adjust. They might give um, a little bit of a cooldown at the end of it. Maybe like just something small, like half a second or a second, um, to where he can't immediately swing after letting go, or he might have a little slowdown after placing his his blade into the into the ground. I don't 
see him staying as he is. He's going to get a nerf, but it's not going to be a big nerf because he actually feels pretty good to play. He does have counterplay. His beam is very narrow. It does You can dodge it as survivors. The There is an issue with his cages, though. The cages act like hooks, but they don't trigger any hook perks. The problem with this is that it brings the, the cages are basically hooks back in 2016. You could camp. You could hard camp those things. You can be right next to the cage and there's nothing the survivor can do once they get out of it. Borrowed time isn't going to activate and get them out of that. It's it's going to be absurd. And I'm not sure what the devs are going to do about that because that, I mean, even that is probably a warranted nerf because it's going to be stupid the amount of camping that you're going to be able to do. Um, in fact, I might play one more match um, after I finish recording this and put it up and just try hard camping it with no insidious, no other thing and see what happens there. The only workaround we have here, or the thing that they might have thought about in regards to this, is the fact that the survivor is teleported far away, right? So depending on where the killer is and where the survivors are, they might be able to get the survivor out of the cage before the killer gets there. But if the killer can get there, that's a lot of camping. I think a lot of camping is going to happen with this thing, especially because those perks don't activate. So I'm not sure what's going to happen here. It's it's kind of an unprecedented thing that they take a kind of a step back and creating an old mechanic, but in a new way. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do about that. But I mean, <clears throat> in regards to his power, giving him a slowdown when activating his, his uh, right of judgment and deactivating it and stopping using it. Um, there's going to be a cooldown uh, at the beginning or the end of that, most likely at the end, and they might even make him slow down, depending, which would be unfortunate because it's pretty fun to fake um, using the beam or just quick using um, the rights to lay some lay the trail, I guess. I got to figure out what to call these things in quick succession. I don't like leaving a long trail. I just like doing small bits here and there. Also, I think it's a bug, but you can start using his power before it reaches full. So I think that's a bug also. He probably shouldn't, isn't meant to be able to use the rights unless it's actually full and red, just like every other killer. So we probably can't use it the same way. So that's not working as intended, we can imagine. And that's going to be a reasonable nerf to him, at least the way I play him. So but I mean, I don't know. It might not be that bad, but I can see that happening. Um, I was basically just talking out of my ass this whole time. So I, I've only played three matches with them. That's kind of my offhand um, thoughts on him and the future of what what uh, nerfs he's going to see and the perks and that. I didn't really pay attention to the survivor perks. Um, they don't seem that bad. Um, I know that there's that healing one, but if I'm right... Um, Soul Guard, it only gives them endurance for 8 seconds after being picked up. So, I mean, it's only 8 seconds, it's basically half of a borrowed time. It really doesn't seem that bad. It really doesn't. I don't see survivors using this because, I mean, it's just like, um, use, it's, it's sort of like using Unbreakable. The only way this works is if a, if a killer slugs. But if a killer picks you up from the dying state right away, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. You're you're on the hook. You don't. It doesn't matter if you're in the dying state and you have endurance for a little bit. So I don't see that being a problem. Blood pact. Uh, you get a little haste, and you can keep track of your fellow survivor. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Repressed alliance. Uh, rep repressed alliance. You can block the generator for thirty seconds. I mean. I can see survivors using this to troll other survivors, but I mean, the survivor's goal is to get the gen to go, right? Is to complete it, not to stop it. So I don't know. And also it has, its requirement is to actually repair generators for a total of 60, 70, 80 seconds. That doesn't seem right. I think it's the other way around, but you fix one gen and then you can block another gen for 30 seconds. I don't see any survivors really using that in a serious match against the killer. I can see it being used against other survivors though. So, I mean, the the survivors got lackluster perks. They got a new skin for their survivor. 
Uh, the killer got lackluster perks, but that's to be expected. And the killer feels great, feels amazing, um, has a few bugs, obvious bugs that are going to be fixed, and uh, ha can is probably going to see a few changes. And uh, I've rambled on for far too long. So anyway, I'm going to end it. I'm going to talk to you later. I'm going to play some more because I actually enjoy it. I've liked the Pyramid Head. I'm talking way too damn much. I will talk to you later.